What is going on guys, Steven here with another China phone and China tablet tutorial. So today I want to show you how to repartition your internal memory. Maybe you're an Android 4.4 KitKat and you have serious issues with your main partition. For instance, if you want to install an application from the Google Play Store, you get um, not enough storage. But on one partition you got just 300 megabytes of free space and on the other partition 10 gigabytes, but you can't use them. And today I want to show you the fix on how to fix that, how to repartition your internal memory. And if you're interested, you can read more on chinadevices.com. You can find the link down below in the description. So just register, you can also ask questions. But now let's get started with the tutorial. Okay, we're now here on my THL 5000. And now I want to show you how my smartphone looks like before we do the fix. So if we go here to storage and settings, we can see one big partition with 12.8 gigabytes and another partition with 600 megabytes, which is the default write disk. And yeah, everything will be stored on that one here. And you see there's just 500 megabytes of free space and on the other one there are 13 gigabytes. So that is some kind of misconfigured. And today I want to show you how to reconfigure that. But before we can do that, we have to enable USB debugging on the smartphone. So just go back to settings and go here to develop options. If you can't see develop options, you have to go to about the phone and tap seven times at build number until you can see you are now a developer. So now just go back, go to develop options and be sure that USB debugging is enabled because we will need this. And after you have enabled that, just go to the computer and follow the other steps. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're now on the computer and now you have to download several things. First of all, you have to download MTK Droid Tools version 2.5.3, which is currently the latest one. It's really important to back up your current system software of the smartphone before you touch it, because there is a risk that you can get a boot loop after flashing different partitions. And if you don't back up your current system and you have a boot loop, then yeah, your phone is pretty useless. So please don't cry if you haven't backed up and you get a boot loop. So I'm not responsible for any damage. Before you do anything to your smartphone, always do a backup. And that's what we'll do with MTK Droid Tools. Then you will also need the USB drivers. Now there are different types of USB drivers. First of all, we need the ADB driver. There is an auto installer from PDA.net. It's pretty simple, just run it. And that ADB driver, makes our phone to be recognized by MTK Droid tools. So that's pretty simple. After that, we will flash modded EBRs, so different partition files, onto our smartphone. And for that we will need another driver. So we'll need the preloader driver to um, get the phone working with SP Flash tool. SP Flash tool is the flashing tool which we'll use to flash our modded partition files to the smartphone. You can find all the things here down below in the description. So please download MTK Droid Tools, the USB driver and SP Flash Tool. Now it's time to choose the correct partitions for the smartphone. So to do that, we go here to xdadevelopers.com. The link is always down below in the description. Now here you will find a thread which is called New Primary Partitions for MTK 6577828992 and also some older one and new one. Okay, now what we're going to do, we will check out the total memory of our smartphone. So you have to know that. You have to know if you have 32 gigabyte, 16, eight or four. That's really important, so please check that out. Then you also need to know which MTK chip you have. That's also really important. You see, those EBR files are just valid for one um, MTK chip. Here it is, the 6589, then we also got some for the um, 6592 octa-core. So it's really important to uh, know your specs. And first of all, we will check out what MTK chip is running under the hood of our smartphone. So make sure USB debugging is on, make sure you have installed the PDA.NET drivers, and then just go into the MTK Droid Tools folder. Now just do a right click on the MTK Droid Tools.exe file, and go to run as administrator. Okay, so just wait until it loads up. And yeah, just be patient. It will now um, wait for the device. Maybe you have to reconnect it. So if nothing is popping up, 
just reconnect this shit. And there we go. You should also see device attached if you have installed the PDA net driver. Oh wait, I think USB debugging is not working. So just give me a second. Okay, I have to accept that on, on my smartphone. That depends on the smartphone. Sometimes you have to accept USB debugging. So I will just reconnect and accept USB debugging. Oh my God, that cable is such a shit. <laughs> So it lost connection. Let's press OK here. OK, so now it's connected. So sometimes it's a little bit buggy. You have to play around. If it's not working, make sure USB debugging is running. Make sure the drivers are running and maybe change the USB port and, and try a different cable. What we see here is hardware and that shows us our MTK chip. Sometimes you buy a smartphone from China, um, which should be an MTK6592 octa-core. Then you connect it to this tool and it tells you, hey, fake hardware, it's just a dual-core MTK6572. So you have to be really careful when you buy stuff from China. Always check with this tool if you really got the real hardware. Otherwise, yeah, you got scammed and that's pretty common in China. Okay, now we know our MTK chip. And you should also know your total space of your smartphone. And you also should know your Android version because usually that's on KitKat, so a problem on KitKat, and here we have 4.4.2. And after you have noted down all the necessary information, you just go here back to XDA developers, and now you search for a modded EBR. So we have Android 4.4 KitKat. That means we have to go right over here here we can see um, primary partitions for KitKat. And we also have to check out that we'll choose the correct ones. So here we got MTK6592. And my smartphone got 16 gigabytes. Now I want, let's say, 8 gigabytes, so 50 50. So I will just take this EBR, which mods the primary partition, so the main partition, to 8 gigabytes. You can also use this one, for instance, if you want to. This will give you the maximum partition, which is possible on an octa-core. If you have 16 or 32, this will give you about 13 gigabytes in the main partition. I will just use this one here as example. So let's just download that. It will redirect you to foreshared.com. Just go here to download. And here to free downloads. And yeah, you have to log in. Um, it's too bad that they're hosted on 4Shared, so you have to log in with Facebook, and that's what I will do right now, so just give me a second. Okay guys, so now I'm back. I have downloaded the zip file, and the zip file here contains our modded EBRs. Now what we have to do is extract that zip file. So just use WinRAR, do a right click on that, and go to Extract here. What you will get is EBR1 and EBR2. EBR1 is partition 1, and EBR2 is partition 2. Pretty simple. So what we're doing right now is a backup of our smartphone. To make a backup, your phone has to be rooted. So you have to have root access. That means the super user binary has to be in your system. And you can use a lot of one-click root exploits to try to root your smartphone, like Kinga root, um, whatever, Shuaim. There are a lot of them, just check out chinadevices.com and if you get questions, just open a new thread. Now you have to make sure that this box here is green. Now the box is yellow, that means we don't have proper root access. If your phone is rooted and this box is yellow, just press here the root button, just press yes here, and then check your smartphone. Now you will get a super user request, which you will have to grant. Okay, so I did it. And now the box should turn green. So you now have root shell until the next reboot. And now you can go here to the second tab, which is root backup and recovery. And here you can click add backup. And what it will do right now is just backup all the files from your smartphone, so from the whole NAND to your um, computer. Maybe you will get an error, there is not enough um, system storage um, on the smartphone. That's pretty common if you don't have enough free space on your smartphone. 
Then you have to insert a micro SD card and that should solve the problem. If you still got issues with the backup, please feel free to open a new thread on chinadevices.com. So this can take up to 10, 15, 20 minutes, that depends on your PC and I will do just a simple cut and after the backup we will continue. Okay guys, now the backup has finished and if you get task ended with error, then you should check out the log here. And here you can see it couldn't copy the system image because there was no space left on the device. Basically what MTK Droid Tools does is it copies the files onto your phone storage and copies them from the phone storage to the PC. If there's not enough phone storage, you will get here an error message. You can try to free up memory or you can just use an external SD card which will resolve that issue. That's what I've said before, if you get an error, please do another backup because for instance if the system image is not complete, the system image is Android and if your phone breaks, you cannot restore Android and that's pretty bad. So make sure there is no error in here. Okay, now we have a backup and now we have to prepare the backup to be flashed with SP Flash tool. So what we'll do right now is we click that here to prepare blocks for flash tool. Now it should open up the backup folder of MTK Droid tools. So what you now choose is the backup of your smartphone. So that's my new backup here. And here you're gonna choose the files.md5 file. And then you just go here to open. Now it will prepare all the blocks all the files here to be flashed with the SP Flash tool. And that can also take some minutes, just like five minutes or something, and I will do another cut here. Okay, after the process has finished, you can close MTK Drawer Tools because we won't need it again. But we have to replace the EBR files in the backup folder. So let's just open up the backup folder, which we can find in MTK Drawer Tools. Here we go to Backups, then now open up the folder from your smartphone, so THL5000. And here should be a files to flash tool folder. Basically, that is your prepared backup with the EBR1 and EBR2 file, which are your partition 1 and partition 2. What you do right now, you um, just create a new folder and you just call it backup. And here you copy in your EBR1 and EBR2. So if anything goes wrong with the new EBR files, you can still use your old ones, okay? So just copy that in should be in here and then you can delete them here from the backup folder okay so now they're gone and now you have to copy in your new downloaded EBRs so let's just drag and drop them in here we go and now you also have to rename them so just remove that KitKat shit here here we got EBR1 and we're gonna rename that to EBR2 okay actually we're done and now we can flash that to our smartphone. So let's just close the folder and let's run SP Flash Tool version 5.1. But before we do that, it's really important to get the preloader driver installed correctly. Okay guys, so now we need to get the preloader recognized by the computer. Now, there are different ways on how to do that. On phones with removable battery, you just remove the battery and you connect them without battery to the computer. On phones with integrated battery, you have to turn them off and when they are turned off with integrated battery, you just connect them to the computer. Now also open up your device manager before you connect the smartphone, okay? So just go here to control panel, system, device manager. What you should see here are different things and when you connect your smartphone, so let me just do that. You should see MT65XX preloader under other devices or ports. That depends if it's already installed or not. Now, if there's a yellow triangle, so let me just reconnect, then it means the preloader is not correctly installed and we have to do that manually. And that's what we'll do right now. So just right click it and go to update driver software. Then you go here to browse my computer for driver software. And now you have to point to the folder which contains the downloaded USB drivers, okay? So there we go. And then just go to next. Maybe if you're running Windows 8 or Windows 7 64 bits, you will get that. That means not signed. And that means you have to disable um, driver signature 
reinforcement or something. I don't know how it is called exactly. But basically, um, you can do that pretty easy. You just have to press F8 at boot on Windows 7, and then you can disable that. On Windows 8, it's a little bit different. You have to do it in the settings, but there are a lot of tutorials online. And I will do that right now, then install the driver, and then I will be back to explain how to continue in the SP Flash tool. Okay, after you have installed the drivers, you should check if they really work correctly. So just reconnect your smartphone in preloader mode, so turned off. And now you should find the preloader just for a couple of seconds on the ports. So let's just try that again. There we go. And we got here MediaTek preloader, so just for one or two seconds and that's completely normal. If you can see that, you're good to go. So just close the device manager. And now we go to the SP Flash tool and now we'll flash our EBRs to the smartphone. So just make sure you run the tool as administrator. That's a, a little bit important. And if you get a message about incorrect scatter, just press OK and go here to scatter loading. Now you have to point to the folder which is in the backup folder of your MTK Droid Tools folder. So just go here to MTK Droid Tools, Backups, then your smartphone backup folder. And now don't load that scatter. Load the scatter which is in Files to Flash Tool. So just load it up. And yeah, it will load all your backup files. Okay, when everything has loaded up in the SP Flash Tool, we can see all the loaded files right over here. The only problem right now we don't need all of the files. So just untick everything except EBR1 and EBR2. So there we go. And we will just flash partition 1 and partition 2 to the smartphone. And if you got problems with that, you can also download the whole firmware, always except preloader. Um, never flash the preloader if it's not necessary. Because if you break the preloader, for instance, if the USB cable comes out of the port when you flash the preloader and it's bricked or something, that's really bad because the preloader communicates with your PC and if that is bricked, your smartphone can't communicate with the PC anymore, it can't charge and it's completely dead. So make sure you never flash that. And um, we will just flash now EBR1 and EBR2. Now you can click here at this row in EBR1 and just check if the path is correct and it is pointing to the EBR which is in the files to flash tool folder. Same here for EBR2. Okay, now we will flash both of those files and then we'll see if it works. If it doesn't work, you can try to download the whole firmware except preloader. So you tick all the things here, but do not tick the preloader. What you do right now, make sure your smartphone is disconnected. Then you hit the download button, it's this one here, and now you can't click anything anymore. What you do right now is you just reconnect your smartphone in preloader mode, and then the download should start automatically. So there we go. You will get the red bar, then the yellow bar, and now download OK. So actually we are finished. On the most phones you have to remove the battery, reinsert the battery, and then you can power them on. And yeah, we are done on the PC and now we can have a look at the smartphone and let's see if the flash was successful and we have our partition 1 and partition 2, so there we go. Oh yeah, and when we now go to settings and to storage again on the same phone, you can see we have one 8GB partition and another 6GB partition. So this is almost perfect. Now there is enough space for apps and you can still use an external SD card. So as you can see, this fix works. It works on all MTK based devices. And if you're more interested in MTK hacks or MTK mods, just check out chinadevices.com. You can find the link down below in the description. Also, if you have questions, just register, open a new thread, and I and my team will try to reply as soon as possible. So as always guys, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again in my next videos. Bye bye.